Thank you. Let's get started. Welcome and thank you to the December information session for the Building Movement Project's Race Equity Assessment, Building Blocks for Change. We will get started with introductions on our part. You can swing to the next slide. I'll introduce myself and I'll hand it over to my colleague, Cameron. I am Mercedes Brown. I'm Building Movement Project's Director of Race Equity Assessment. I am based in Michigan, just outside of the Ann Arbor area, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm charged in my role as the Director of Race Equity Assessment with overseeing all aspects of the race equity assessment, including launch, our future scaling related goals, and leading the and developing the strategic strategy to ensure as many nonprofits um, and capacity builders and consultants have access to the race equity assessment resource as possible. I will hand it over to my colleague, Cameron, to introduce herself. Thanks, Mercedes. Hi, folks. My name is Cameron Snell. My pronouns are she, her, and I am located in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I serve as the Race Equity Assessment Associate with the Building Movement Project. So in addition to supporting Mercedes and developing and scaling building blocks for change, I also serve as the organization engagement lead and the process coordinator. Perfect. Thank you, Cameron. And if folks can uh, take a moment to also drop in the chat as you're coming in, uh, welcome to the folks who are just joining us in the chat, your introductions, that would be Fantastic. I will share in the the chat the things that might be helpful for, for us to know about you. And thanks again for, for taking time out of your afternoon to, to join us and learn more about the race equity assessment. We can transition to the next slide. Let's, before we dive in though, make sure we're on the same page about how our team um, pulls together these monthly information sessions and how we'll uh, make the use of the, the rest of the time that we have this afternoon. We will, um, in the spirit of logistics, there's a couple things I want to cover right away before I go over the agenda, which is this webinar is being recorded. For so for those of you who had joined right at the, the start, you might have heard the recording announcement go off. So it is being recorded and therefore it will be posted on and on Building Movement Project's website and will also be sent out to everyone who registered for the session. So you'll get access to the recording as well as the slide deck that we use and any other materials or links that we share uh, throughout the session. And, and that might be helpful if you have colleagues who were unable to join us or if you would like to refer back to anything that we covered today, you should be able to, to get access to that in about a week's time. So I um, wanted to, to announce that right out the gate. A couple of other things is uh, we like to cover ways of interacting with our team uh, throughout the information session. So they'll, we'll launch into a series of polls to get some familiarity and understanding of who is joining us in the Zoom room. We will also encourage you to use the chat as I just did a moment ago with introductions. I encourage you to use the chat to interact with one another as well as the Building Movement Project team. And the last thing or ask that we have of you is instead of using the chat to ask our team questions, I encourage you to use the Q&A feature to submit questions so our team can track and respond to the questions as they come in without them getting lost. So we'll be responding to questions occasionally as they come in, and we might hold those questions for the Q&A segment towards the end of our session. So I you know, do encourage you, we'll encourage you at several points throughout the the session to, to ask questions of our team, but just uh, hope that you would use the Q&A feature to submit those questions. So very quickly, before we launched into our opening polls, we will cover with regard to the building blocks for change race equity assessment, we'll provide an overview, which will include um, some information around the framework that we use to develop the assessment and all companion components of the assessment. We'll talk through the process my colleague Cameron will walk us through a live dashboard demonstration. We'll, we'll save time again for questions and answers, and then we'll close out by making sure you know where to find us should you have more interest and questions about the race equity assessment. So I am now going to hand it off to my colleague Cameron to, to swing us into the polls. Awesome. Thanks, Mercedes. Alrighty, folks, so I will get us started 
with our first poll question, which speaks to how you identify um, in terms of your experience or the way that you engage with your clients. So I'm launching a poll now and then we'll see who's in the room and then hop to the next one. Good, good, we're almost there. Let's see if we can't get just a little bit more engagement. Awesome, so we are at 100%. I will share these results with us. So it looks like we have a good mix of folks. We've got um, two people joining us who are nonprofit employees. We have a nonprofit intermediary employee, and then we have an advocacy group member. So thank you all so much. That's helpful to, to gauge who's in the room. I'll stop sharing and I will launch us into our second poll question, which is how would you describe your race equity experience? So we're seeing some progress here. Perfect folks. Awesome, so we have another good mix here. We have some folks who participate in race equity efforts within their, their current work. Um, it looks like we have some folks who help nonprofits advance their race equity strategies and then folks who are kind of all across the board. Awesome, y'all. Thank you so much. And then we'll move into our, our last poll question, um, which speaks to your familiarity with BB4C specifically. Awesome, y'all. So let's take a look. We have some folks who are slightly familiar with BB4C. So you've either seen an announcement or maybe been able to attend a, a webinar or an, inf or an information session. Um, or excuse me, you've seen an announcement about that. Then we also have um, someone joining us who has been able to attend or, or view a webinar. Awesome, y'all. So thank you all so much for participating. Again, it's really helpful for us to gauge who's in the room with us during these calls. That way we can best um, tailor our content to, to your specific interests and needs. So I will kick it back to Mercedes. Perfect. Thank you, Cameron. And thanks, folks, for spending time with uh, those uh, those polls. And uh, I, you know, right off the gate, given us, as my colleague Cameron said, a, a good sense of who's in the room, your experience with rates equity and your familiarity with building movement projects, rates equity assessment tool, building blocks for change. Um, with that, let's shift gears now. I am going to provide that BB4C overview that I referenced earlier. And just as a point of reference, I'll likely use the acronym BB4C from this point forward just to, to, to save on time. We have a lot that we can cover um, in the time that we have. I would like to encourage folks to take what you can, know that you'll have the email follow-up coming your way with the information I referenced earlier, and know that we encourage you and we're available to schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And in fact, it's something you can do um, by using the link as well. So without further ado, let's dive into the race equity assessment. Uh, by way of background, Building Blocks for Change, or BB4C, is an automated race equity assessment that our team at Building Movement Project designed, started designing at this point nearly four years ago, to assist nonprofits in developing the foundational capacities that are critical to fostering more racially equitable and inclusive workplaces for their employees. This body of work came out of our Race to Lead uh, report series, which some folks may have familiarity with. We'll share a link uh, about our race to lead content, but that is really where uh, BMP got the idea and recommendation to develop a race equity assessment to help nonprofit leaders and capacity builders that were interested in meaningfully integrating and embedding racial equity practices and principles in their day-to-day -day operations, but really not uh, as familiar with some of the best resources to use or even a basis uh, of understanding of where they, they were at a baseline as it relates to their culture, uh, of the culture of the organization. So what we've done with the BB4C assessment is develop a process, test a process over the last three and a half years that aims to help nonprofit leaders and staff 
deepen their understanding of the changes they need to make internally to create more racial equity and create a more inclusive environment for their employees uh, that really leaves staff feeling a true sense of belonging. And we do that by leaning on what we believe are the most impactful drivers of organizational and cult culture change. This is critical from our perspective, regardless of whether or not a an organization is pursuing racial equity when he shifts, it is critical for the development of the organization. And those are learning, leadership, conversation, and voice. We can swing to the next slide, which provides a visual of this uh, four capacities, these four capacities that I just referenced, which make up in conjunction with something I'm going to cover in a moment, the building blocks for change or BB4C assessment framework. So again, it's our belief that these four levers or capacities are critical for organizations that are looking to develop, grow, and evolve, which is all necessary um, for advancing racial equity related goals across the organization. Very quickly, more information on the framework can be found on our website, but organizations, as it relates to learning, organizations that are willing to learn, test new ideas and shift are obviously poised and better position to make the types of changes across the organization that are likely to be necessary in order to create a more racially equitable and inclusive workplace for their employees. Similarly, as it relates to leadership, organizations who have uh, who have the support and backing of their senior leadership who serve as avid and unwavering champions of racial equity are also better positioned to make the types of shifts within the organization and changes to its culture long term, cultivate the type of environment that's necessary for the organization to make the types of shift in services in service of equity. As it relates to conversation, which is another one of the capacities that we have uh, honed in on here, this refers to our belief that our belief that organizations, staff of the organization, leaders within the organization have to be able to have hard conversations, have to develop resilient, trusting relationships with one another in order to have hard conversations about race and inequity within the organization, obviously in order for the organization to advance any type of culture shifts and changes within. And lastly, it's our belief that organizations have to amplify the both voice and influence of folks within the organization who belong to marginalized groups, especially folks who identify as people of color within the organization. We have to create space to not only hear from and hear about the experiences of folks who belong to certain groups within the organization, but we have to allow them to have influence over the types of changes that the organization will likely need to, to undertake in order to, to shift to being more equitable and inclusive. So those are those four capacities or muscles as I often describe them that we believe organizations need to build out in order to be able to grow, evolve and change regardless of whether or not they're pursuing racial equity work and they're especially critical if they are pursuing equity work. The last thing I'll cover, which you'll see if you're able to view the screen, off on the right hand of the slide, there's this mention of focus area. So we then further analyze the findings um, that come in through the survey from organizations who take the assessment through the lens of what we refer to as these focus areas. This we lifted from behavior change models in a way and landed on something that we believe will help organizations better understand uh, as it relates to motive, their motivation, how interested are they across the organization and fostering a more racially equitable workplace. So how committed are they? We also seek to illuminate how organizations have or have not uh, tried to apply racial equity principles in the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. And lastly, as it relates to structures, here we're trying to better identify and then report back to the organization through their report and help them build up their, their ability 
to systemically embed that commitment to advancing racial equity across the organization by learning and implementing and testing new ideas that shift the current and agitate the current culture, which may be blocking the organization from maintaining a racially equitable and inclusive workplace. So it's through this lens, the framework really does undergird the entire assessment process all the way through from the survey that the employees respond to during the survey phase of the process, which I'll cover momentarily, all the way through to the skill building and the additional resources that the Building Movement Project staff have developed as companion pieces to accompany the assessment. So this is a great time to shift gears and take a look at the process. So the process is further detailed on our website, but I will cover here after three and a half years of testing, it became clear to us that organizations who were utilizing the BB4C race equity assessment were really centering their uh, the arc of their overall process was sort of centering around these three active phases bookended by work on the front end to prepare for the process and on the, the latter end, or in the, the end, this ongoing implementation related work, which relates to how do they t understand the effectiveness or lack thereof or the types of changes that they're making organizationally. So here we landed on this process, which kicks off with organizations assembling a team, which we call the assessment team, charged with leading the organization through the BB4C assessment process. We identify three discrete roles based on our observations through beta testing with over 90 organizations. Here we learned that organizations who identify someone to play a facilitator role and facilitate the process, someone to, or facilitate meetings rather, specific meetings. And we also seen organizations identify a staff person charged with the role of uh, navigating the process, serving as the process lead, as well as a staff person or two who serves as the champion. So those are the three roles that we encourage organizations to identify and fill at a minimal, but we recognize for some organizations, they may get beyond that. That's a minimal. We learn from organizations who were devoting one or two people to the process that that really wasn't enough of an infrastructure to set the organization up for success. So that is one of the primary milestones that's happening in the getting ready phase, in addition to just parading and preparing the entire organization for the assessment process. The one thing I'll note here is this process was designed to accompany the work of and really supplement the work of a consultant or capacity builder. So it is the one thing I want folks to hold is that it is possible for a capacity builder and we have experienced this through our beta testing of the assessment tool, a capacity builder or a consultant to be working alongside the organization. So they may fill one of the roles that I referenced a moment ago. Sometimes you see them play the role of the facilitator and sometimes the process lead. So after organizations have gotten ready to launch the assessment, they swing into phase one. Phase one is the, you know, we're not hiding the ball here. The name of the phase is, you know, taking the survey. So during this phase, organizations are setting expectations, building enthusiasm for the process and administering the survey part of the overall BB4C assessment. So staff across the organization do fill, complete a survey. We offer a lot of guidance around how to prepare for the survey, everything from you know who to invite to participate in the survey based on our intention. The Building Movement Project team has pulled together a lot of resources to help organizations prepare to get that survey out and uh, uh, moving through the organization. This phase takes around three to five weeks, and it does depend on the size of the organization. It depends on the, uh, the time of year, other competing priorities, but based on our, our years of testing, that is the sort of average time frame that we've observed. After organizations have had the survey 
in the field across the organization. They express they're ready to close it. We are able to turn around that survey in about one, two weeks, or excuse me, the uh, report, which includes our findings and recommendations in around one to two weeks, typically on the one week side, depending on the time of year for our team. But that is an automated process on our end. Uh, so, you know, we are able to uh, we ha we are able to work with the data scientists and turn those findings around relatively quickly. So that those were that report, those findings and recommendations are shared with the organization, and they swing into phase two of the BB4C process, which is where they are encouraged to distribute those findings across the staff and have meaningful conversations and dialogue regarding the organization's report and their findings. We produced a lot of materials to help organizations navigate all phases of the process. And this process is where we really go deep and offer a significant number of materials to help organizations navigate the discussion phase of the BB4C process. And again, keep in mind, a consultant could be supporting this work as well. And then last, but certainly, or second to last year, organizations swing into phase three of the process, which is where they assemble another team charged with stewarding the implementation of the organization's race equity strategies, which may be, a, may be a separate strategy for an organization, may be, and we encourage organizations to consider ways in which they might integrate that into their broader strategic and organizational development plan for the organization. And then the organization sort of moves into the phase of ongoing implementation, where they are, you know, for some organizations, refining and developing that plan as well as standing up a mechanism to get regular feedback and have regular conversations with employees across the organization uh, in the spirit of soliciting feedback around how well and how intentional the organization is being and meeting their goals and aspirations as it relates to creating a more inclusive and equitable environment for their employees. And I, this will enable organizations obviously to understand whether or not there may be gaps between their intention and, and, and how they're uh, presently doing organizationally. So that covers the BB4C process, assessment process. Let's swing into the next slide, which will cover a little bit more of the overall timeline. So I referenced all earlier that that assessment team is a minimal one to three employees. What I didn't share earlier is what we observed through uh, nearly four years of testing, which is that organizations that are really intentional about managing that entire process have taken anywhere from six to nine months. The one thing I want to make sure I drive home here is this assessment process, we, it's, we're clear it can range six to nine months, but it's really determined by the pace that is set by the individual organization. So we have seen organizations move through that process uh, is in as few as six months, and as many as nine months. And so what we, and I shared earlier, I tried to provide some insights around how long on average organizations spend in each of the individual phases. But, you know, the reason we don't include timeframes on there is because it is so organization dependent. The last thing I'll call out is time commitment, because we get this a lot, this question a lot. We observed through our beta test that organizations deployed anywhere between one to 15 hours per week to support the process. What I will offer is organizations who come down on the higher end of that continuum likely have staff devoted to the stewarding and overseeing the racial equity or justice and belonging related work of the organization. So there we might see uh, someone who is on staff whose charge it is to lead race equity work for the organization. And so they're better positioned from a resource standpoint to deploy 15 hours. We're more than likely to see organizations who don't have that luxury um, closer to the uh, sort of fewer hours end of the that continuum. We can shift gears now to the what organizations received. I kind of spoke to some of this already, but organizations who opt into BB4C receive access to an anonymized staff-wide survey. So that is what happens in phase one of the process that I referenced a few slides ago. Organizations don't have to compile that survey. It's compiled already. It's backed by uh, evidence and data. It 
has been validated and we standardize this assessment for organizations. What they get coming out of that is access to a custom report, which offers disaggregated findings where possible, as well as recommendations. Now those findings and those recommendations are through the lens of that four capacity framework that I referenced earlier. Larger organizations are likely to be eligible for uh, more disaggregated findings. And there are a lot of ways that we can disaggregate the report. There, um, one of the few ways, which I'll mention, which just shows up on the slide here is by race and position, but we can also disaggregate findings by tenure, position, gender, if I'm not mistaken for organizations. The next thing orgs get access to is communication. So regular process and progress updates from our team are provided to share with the organizations as well as a capacity builder or consultant they might be partnering with, the percentage of their workforce, their employees who are participated in the survey during the active survey taking phase. This is one of and many examples of the types of communications organizations may receive. We also share at that time helpful tips that we've observed and strategies for that organizations have deployed uh, in the past to incentivize participation and get the organization closer to having fuller staff engagement in the assessment process. The other thing which I won't spend too much time talking about because you'll get to see a live demo is orgs have access to a dashboard. This dashboard houses robust library of digital materials, guidance, tools, and resources on how the organization can move through that assessment process that I detailed earlier, as well as access a help desk to receive regular technical assistance and support from the Building Movement Project team, which is the very last component of the BB4C um, offering. We'll shift gears now just to make sure we cover the other component of the Building Blocks for Change assessment, which is the newest edition. In October, our team released a suite of resources to aid capacity builders and consultants who are interested in using the BB4C race equity assessment in their work with their nonprofit clients. And that is BB4C Pro for consultants. So we heard loud and clear um, from our consultant partners that they love the resource and tool and that they wanted some additional tools to help them navigate the process and really maximize their use of the tool. And so we 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 heard them and we listened. So we developed and launched a dashboard with with digital tools and resources to support consultants. We also are available to provide technical support and assistance by the staff at the Building Movement Project. We share those participation rates of their clients who are participating in the assessment and will support consultants on the front end by offering training and onboarding to help them understand the nuances of the race equity assessment so that they can comfortably use it with the uh, with their with their clients. We can swing to the next slide and I'll cover very quickly the multiple ways that the assessment can be used. So the assessment can be and has been used in two primary ways. One organizations on a one-on-one -on -one basis so an individual organization can choose to purchase and use the race equity assessment and they could be doing it uh, moving through the process on their own or they could be doing so with the support of a consultant or organizations can participate in the bb4c assessment as part of a larger learning and practice community so through a cohort model because of that when we were designing this companion resource for consultants, we developed two primary areas of content and resources and made those available to consultants. So there are materials to support their one-on-one -on -one work with their client organizations and materials to support their work with uh, communities of practice where there's two or more nonprofits who are using the race equity assessment process and participating in a larger learning collaborative. So that is, in a nutshell, a lightning speed. We did a full webinar on the uh, BB4C Pro for Consultants resource in October, which we'd be happy to share with folks if you are interested in learning more about that companion resource. I will we'll shift gears now and actually do a lightning speed 
look at the BB4C report. So this is a snapshot of the Building Blocks for Change report. I am going to drop a link to the report in the chat. I just want to make sure I got the most current link. So folks should be able to see this just in case you would like to take a look. And again, we will share this as part of that follow-up communication I referenced earlier as well. Let's though take a peek at the very first page. So this page, if you're following along on your screen or on the screen, these are just a couple cutaways or screenshots from that report. The report sort of kicks off by diving into the organization's findings. So here you'll see an overview of the process and the report and include those high level findings as well as demographic information as well. So organizations here are going to be able to gain their sort of first look at how how their employees across the organization perceive their racially equity work as it relates to how well or least developed that work is. That's the lens by which we report our observations of findings up through. So we don't report quantitative numbers and figures. So for organizations or consultants who are looking to find those quantitative figures and numbers, we this is it was BNP's intention to, to really push against that. And we found through our years of testing that organizations responded more positively and were able to shift to action more effectively when they received their findings in the format where we provide a narrative paired with a visual. And that's what you see on this slide here. So this slide just shows the overall result, a result by capacity, learning, leadership, conversation, voice, and uh, it shows their results across this scale that provide some insights around what we recommend the organization should do next. And so we can shift gears now. Let's dive deeper into one of the capacities, which is learning. So here, organizations are able to go deeper into the learning capacity with those findings broken down across those three focus areas I, I referenced earlier, motivation, practice, and structures to understand where the organization, again, is most and least developed as it relates to their ability to, to learn, test new strategies, right? If we think about how I referred to that learning capacity way back when, <laughs> earlier uh, in the slide deck. So this page also lists what we call as elements of each focus areas, which identify where their survey respondents, i.e. their employees, feel the organization is most, again, and least developed based on their responses. Now, again, this is a cutaway or a screenshot, so you can't read this in close detail, but if you, are click, if you clicked on that link, you will be able to see some of the uh, uh, the some of the nuances within organizations, some of the practices, approaches, and dynamics of the organization, and how we roll those up, you would be able to to take a closer look. Let's shift gears to the next slide to break the results down even further. So, organizations again that are eligible that have enough diversity and have a larger enough uh, response across the organization, will be able to take it one step further and disaggregate those findings. So here, organizations are able to gain important insights around how different staff groups might be experiencing their racial, racial equity or the lack thereof within the organization, which is critical for understanding how to right-size responses and strategies that the organization will need to deploy in service of creating more equitable and inclusive workplace. And so on this particular slide, which I know may be a little hard to see, here we break down the our findings by, again, capacity. So across all four capacities, and we break their findings down by staff who identify as persons of color, folks who staff who identify as white, so we draw that comparison. We also break their findings down by staff. So folks who are not in senior leadership role, and we compare that against the findings that we observe in the responses of staff who identified as being a part of the organization's senior management. 
So we are able to then take it one step further um, on this slide, the next slide, and break the uh, responses down and look deeper by race and ethnicity when possible. And another reminder I'll offer, I shared this earlier, we're also able to dig into gender and role and position as well. So the very last a uh, couple slides I'll cover from the report just to, to give you a feel for the latter part of the report, which swings into the getting started or moving to action phase. So we can shift to the next slide here. On this slide, you'll start to see where we lay out a slate of recommendations and custom steps for where organizations might start enacting changes across the across the organization based on their finding. This will include resources and tips that again, tie back to our capacity framework. So we'll always center our findings on the relevant capacity. So if we find that organizations are least developed in their conversation capacity, we'll offer find or we'll lift those findings up in the earlier part of the report and we'll offer it during this, or in this section of the report, recommendations for how the organization may access available resources to strengthen their ability to have tougher conversations within the organization, which will likely center on building and repairing relationships in order to, to enable the organization to get there. The very next thing I'll, I'll say, and then I'll close it out and hand it off to my colleague to move us through the demo, is the um, just like the earlier slide that we looked at. Here we have learning, and the moving to action section is where we'll start to get into more details about how the organization can strengthen that learning capacity through the lens of those three focus areas. So given our observations and our findings of how motivated the organization is to learn, how well the organization in its day-to-day -day operations test and put things into practice, right? New, um, new strategies, new approaches, new ways of being organizationally, all the way through to the, again, systemic ways in which an organization demonstrates that motivation and commitment to, to change. We'll make recommendations about available resources that the org can leverage in service of growing and building that muscle and strengthening that learning capacity. So each of the four capacities would have a page in the report that looks similar to this that would depend on the organization's findings in the earlier section. So I know that was a lot uh, in this report, that it, this is just a snapshot, but intended to give you a, a feel for, for what the report could be like. So I will, without further ado, because I know we want to make sure we can move through the demo, hand it over to my colleague, Cameron, to move us through the BB4C dashboard demonstration. Perfect. All righty, y'all. So as Mercedes has alluded to a few times throughout our discussion today, this is the BB4C dashboard. So in essence, the BB4C dashboard is a digital library um, that is full of materials and resources like videos, workouts, or worksheets, handouts um, that are intended to support organizations as they navigate the process. So as you can see here, the dashboard is password protected. That way all of your organization's information is stored and um, can't be shared with other organizations. So as you can see here, we have logged in. This is the general layout of the dashboard. At a high level, there are some really cool elements that I want to highlight here for us. Mercedes spoke to technical assistance um, in our previously in our conversation um, via a help desk, and that can be found on the BB4C dashboard. So I'll click into it and just show briefly that this is a, a short form that organizational process leads um, can fill out to submit requests for technical assistance, process-related assistance, um, specifically if you want to close your survey, if you've reached um, hopefully 100% survey participation or at least 75%, as Mercedes mentioned, um, you can go here to close that survey should you have an issue with your, with your survey link or the survey itself, um, you can submit requests for technical assistance here and provide further information. This is um, monitored 
internally by the BB4C team. So we are dedicated to ensuring that you have timely uh, support and effective support as well. Again, as I mentioned, the dashboard is full of tips and reminders that will help you navigate the assessment process. So one of those tips here is a legend that you can find, and that'll help you understand document titles that can be found here. Um, the document types, again, I mentioned a few of them, but there are handouts, we have worksheets, we offer reference materials, and then sample agendas. We also offer support about how to understand who should use each of these, each of these materials. And then we provide context as to why the materials are ordered in the way, the way in which they're, they're ordered. That will make sense as I scroll down to sort of the, the, the meat and potatoes of the dashboard. One um, element here that I want to highlight is that the dashboard is phase-based. So as you can see, we're in the getting ready phase, which is where organizations start the BB4C assessment process. But as you navigate through each of the phases, you'll find similar support for each phase. So here I mentioned previously that there are more general tips and reminders here. Specific reminders or phase-specific reminders, you'll be able to find right in the section here for getting ready. One of the, the main elements is completing your organizational profile. We have a direct link to the organizational profile and a reminder to complete that before progressing to the, to the next phase. We also provide an interactive checklist that will help you organize your materials and your team as you're preparing and executing each phase, as well as providing follow-up action items as you progress to the next phase. So I mentioned the types of materials that we have. I'm happy to click into some of them, um, but as you can see here, we offer a number of materials that will help you, your organization internally, um, guide yourself through BB4C, or should you work with um, an external consultant, capacity builder, or facilitator, um, these are the materials that they can use to help guide your organization through the assessment process. So Mercedes mentioned the assessment team, which is the group of one to three people minimally who will guide your organization through the assessment process. We have gotten plenty of questions throughout beta testing about those roles, defining those roles and what they should look like. So in this material, you can see that we clearly define each role and provide deeper context around each role. And then we also provide a high level overview of a, like a description, a time commitment, traits for success, all of the pieces of information that are, are helpful in constructing that assessment team and really allowing folks to gauge the, the amount of commitment that's gonna be necessary to effectively serve on that team. So that is one of the many materials that we have. Another material that is a newer material actually that I'm happy to demo for us. Um, we get lots of questions about how, about understanding the framework, uh, deepening folks' understanding of the framework, and then how the framework actually connects to the survey and the specific survey questions. So we have developed a resource that clearly defines that connection and that helps you sort of put the, the framework and the connection to the survey in the context of the broader BB4C framework. So as I mentioned previously, as you're navigating the, the BB4C assessment process and entering different phases, you'll be able to find similar materials for each phase. Other elements of the dashboard that I wanna highlight here, um, should you have questions, lingering questions after 
an information session or just after um, just looking through the dashboard, we do offer phase specific frequently asked questions for each phase. And again, after you look through this, if you still have questions, you can ask any questions through the help desk. Another element that I wanna highlight here is that we do offer videos in each phase. So those offer the similar support that um, the, the general information on the dashboard is gonna offer, as well as some of the information that's highlighted by the materials, but in a visual and an auditory format. And then the last element of the dashboard that I want to highlight is that each phase offers opportunity for reflections. So we offer reflection questions for your process lead to answer at the end of every phase that will have you reflect on your current progress and timeline. Um, it will allow you to make any adjustments to the process or timeline as you're moving forward, identify best practices, identify um, areas of improvement as you're navigating. And then it's also helpful for us to gauge where you are in the assessment process. That way we can tailor the, the amount and the types of support that we provide as you're navigating the assessment process. So that is the BB4C dashboard at a glance. Um, I will kick it back to Mercedes. Thanks folks. Perfect, Cameron. I do believe we are going to go into questions and answers should folks have them. So again, I'll put another call out for folks to submit any questions through the Q&A feature down at the bottom of your Zoom bar if you have any. If not, we're happy to make sure folks know where to find us and close us out. So we'll hold. Give folks a chance. We also have so few people on this information session. So if you have a question, you are also, you, you would be perfectly within your right to raise your hand and we would allow you to talk. You don't usually get a chance to do that on the uh, more <laughs> dense webinars or information sessions. But if any one has a question, we'd be happy to take your question. Otherwise, we'll just make sure you know where to find our team. Let's take a look at the Q&A. See if there's any hands up. Okay. I'm comfortable with silence, but I think... <laughs> Perhaps we don't have any questions, which is okay too. That was a lot of information to take in. Thank you for being on the on the call for joining us to to learn more about the race equity assessment. We are sharing links to the contact form on our website, which you're encouraged to should you have additional questions when you uh, receive the follow up communication next week you are encouraged to go onto our website to learn more about the assessment and or sign up for a conversation with my colleague Cameron and I. Again, thank you for your time and I hope folks have a great rest of your day. Thanks folks.